Hi there, everybody. So happy first day of snow. Uh, we had a good class on goal setting. I know many of you wanted to come but couldn't make it because of the snow or um, other other um, items on your agenda. So um, I'm going to go ahead and record a session of this class um, rather than teaching or recording the live class. Um, because you'll find that in this class, you'll have a lot of time that I'm not speaking and that you are writing. So before we get started, uh, just a couple of things to know. You'll want to have a pen and quite a few sheets of paper um, for today. And um, we will also have moments where you will pause the video to work on um, what I've prompted you on. And you'll resume once you've worked on what I prompted you with. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, so we're going to talk first about goal setting today. With goal setting, let's see if I can get this thing to work. What we'll cover is first the concepts behind goal setting, some limitations that we find when we set goals. We'll set some goals together, we'll commit to those goals, and then we'll build out what's called an MVVP. Um, and then I'll walk you through the next steps in order to uh, move forward in your business planning. Again, this is a, the first step to a four series business plan. So first and foremost is the concept of um, setting goals. So I want you to think about why do we set goals? Why are goals important to you or important to, for anybody to set? What we know is that goals are for a purpose which give us a sense of direction and help us move towards what we des desire or what we have an effort to work towards. They're things which help us point our life in the right direction and are a powerful tool to be able to vision out what we want to um, accomplish in our vision. So they give us a, a purpose and direction and a vision. Now we also want to talk about what makes goals not work. So we create all these great goals and then they don't work. Why would these goals not work? Well, what we know is that sometimes we can set unrealistic goals. They can be too narrow. We underestimate how much time these goals would take to complete. Maybe we didn't appreciate our failures, meaning we were really nervous to go after a goal. We went ahead and did it and it didn't turn out so well. I'm sure all of us have experienced this. And then we have two opportunities here. One way that we can go is to say, forget it. I'll never do that again. The other way to go is to learn from it or appreciate those failures and move forward. Maybe we set other people's goals. This is a big real estate issue. We will hear what other people want to close in the next year, how many deals somebody wants to do. And we say, that's great. That'll be my goal. And we never really set a goal for ourselves that's meaningful to ourselves. We set goals that um, we never review, right? We great put all this work and effort into setting goals, and then that piece of paper goes into a drawer that we don't see for another three years. We set negative goals. So uh, maybe our goal, instead of a positive goal saying, I want to lose weight, is I don't want to get any fatter, right? Uh, we set too many goals. Maybe we have goals that are, are too, there's too many of them. So when we build out our goals today, I want you to keep these limitations in mind. Make sure we're setting goals that are realistic to your lifestyle. Make sure that your focus is expanded well enough for you to be able to complete these goals. And think about the time that it'll take to complete these goals and if that's realistic. When you go after the goals, if something comes up and you don't do it quite perfect, appreciate that opportunity to learn. When you're setting your goals, make them about you. What do you want rather than what somebody else has told you they're going to do? When you set your goals, let's build out an action plan that'll allow you to review them regularly. Let's build out some structure around that. Instead of setting a negative goal, keep your goals positive. And our, we'll want to set no more than seven goals. So today I'm going to help you with what those seven goals are. We have seven categories in which to set our goals. First is in our lifestyle. Next is intellectually, our relational goals, 
physically, spiritually, occupationally, and emotionally. When we set these goals, we wanna make sure that they're specific. You wanna have great detail in your goals. You wanna make sure that they're measurable. You want a starting point and an ending point. You wanna make sure that you can achieve that goal. You wanna make sure that goal is realistic. And you wanna put a timestamp on those goals. So today for our goal setting, we're gonna vision out as far as five years from now. And that's where we're gonna start. Then we'll vision three years, one year, a month from now, a week from now, and 24 hours from right now. So let's start with five years from now. In five years, I want you to imagine that you are living the best life that you have ever lived. Everything is much more than you expected it, and you are so grateful for everything you're experiencing. Let me ask you what has happened in your life in five years, what would make that amazing? Maybe we have multiple houses. Maybe we have multiple cars. Where are those houses? Where are those cars? Maybe we're investing in real estate. Maybe we travel multiple times a year. What kind of lifestyle are you living in five years that makes your world amazing? You can go ahead and begin to start writing these down. Intellectually, where are we in five years? Maybe I'm on a stage sharing about investment in properties because in five years, I'm gonna become an expert on investments. Maybe in five years intellectually, I wanna be reading five books a month. Maybe five years from now, I wanna be a great leader. Where do you wanna be five years from now intellectually? Relationally, what could you imagine your relationships to be like five years from now? What does that look like for you? How's your relationship with your spouse, your significant other, your children? How's your relationship with your family? How much time are you spending with your family? What are your relationships like with your clients? Five years from now, imagine you're in the best physical shape you've ever been. What does that look like for you? Five years from now, what is your dream physically? Maybe we're going to the gym regularly. Maybe we've lost 20 pounds in five years. Maybe we've lost 100 pounds in five years, depending on where you're at. Maybe we're sleeping more, more regularly. Maybe we have a better night's sleep. Maybe we're eating a really, really healthy plan. What does your world look like for you physically in five years that you love? Spiritually, where are we spiritually in five years that makes us beyond happy? If you're religious, what's your relationship with who you're religious with? What's your relationship with God? What about spiritually with inside yourself? Are you doing yoga regularly? Are you meditating? Are you journaling? What does that look like for you five years from now? Occupationally, five years from now, your business is the best business you've ever imagined it to be. What are you netting? How many units are you closing? Are you working on a team? Have you built a team? Are you doing more than selling real estate? How much money are you getting in profit share every month? Emotionally, five years from now, you are looking inward and love who you are. What self-work have you done? Who do you want to be in five years? I want you to take the next five to 10 minutes, go ahead and pause the video and fill this out. Really expand on all seven categories of what your dream would look like in five years. Once you're ready to move on, go ahead and unclick the pause button or press the play button and we'll move forward. So we just finished dreaming out what a perfect life would look like five years from now. Now I want to ask you, it, in three years, what do we need to accomplish or where do we need to be to meet all of these same goals? What kind of lifestyle do I need to be living three years from now 
in order to live my five-year dream? Where do I need to be intellectually in three years from now in order to have the intellectual dream that I have five years from now? What do my relationships look like three years from now in order to live the dream life five years from now? What do I need to have accomplished in three years in order to be on track for my five-year dream of being in the best physical shape of my life or having the best physical experience in my life? What do I need to do in three years or what do I have to accomplish in three years to be able to hit my spirituality five-year goal? Occupationally, what should I have done? What should I have accomplished in three years in order to live my five-year dream? Emotionally, who do I need to become in three years to be the dream person that I want to be in five? Go ahead and take about five to 10 minutes through this section as well to break down your five-year dreams and turn them into three-year goals. What do I need to accomplish in the next three years in all of these categories in order to reach my five-year dream? Once you've taken the time to write that down, you'll go, or go ahead and press pause. Once you've taken the time to write that down, we'll start again and talk about your one or your one year goals. So go ahead and press pause and we'll begin shortly. One year from now. So we're going to take our three year goals, what needs to happen in three years and break down what needs to happen in one year to reach our three year goal. We're going to use all seven categories again. In one year, what do we need to do to reach our three-year lifestyle goal? In one year, what do we need to do to reach our three-year intellectual goal? In one year, what needs to be accomplished to reach our three-year relational goal? In one year, what do I need to accomplish to reach my three-year physical goal? In one year, what do I need to have done to be able to reach my three-year spiritual goal. In one year, where do I need to be in order to reach my three-year occupational goal? And in one year, where do I need to be to reach my three-year emotional goal? Who do I need to become? Go ahead and take about five minutes to fill out this section as well. Take your time, fill it out with deep detail. And once you are done, go ahead and press the play button. All right, one month from now. So we just built out our one year goals. What do we need to accomplish in one year in order to have the dream life in five years? Now let's talk about what do we need to accomplish in one month in order to live our one year goal. We're gonna work on all seven categories. In one month, what do you need to do to work towards reaching your one year goal in your lifestyle. In one month, what do we need to do to work towards reaching our one-year goal intellectually? Maybe I'm reading one book a month if I want to reach my intellectual goal in a year. Relationally, what do we need to do in our relationships this month in order to reach our one-year goal? Maybe this month I'm going to intentionally spend an hour with each immediate family member. Physically, what do I need to do this month in order to reach my one-year goal? Maybe physically I want to lose 20 pounds, so maybe this month I'm going to go to a gym five days a week, every week, and I'm going to start walk, counting my calories. Spiritually, what do I need to do this month in order to reach my one-year goal? Maybe I need to meditate every morning. Maybe my goal this month is to meditate every morning to reach my one-year spiritual goal. Occupationally, what do I need to do this month to reach my one-year occupational goal? And do I have the answer for you? You just need to come to business planning class this Thursday, a week from, well, a week, who knows when you're watching this. You need to come to business planning class on October 17th, 2019. If you are watching this past that, please come see myself or Jackie and we'll help you through business planning 135. Now, what do I need to do this month to reach my emotional goal? Maybe I'm going to watch a podcast every week about becoming the person that I want to become. 
Maybe I'm going to watch a podcast every week about how to reduce my stress. Go ahead and take a few minutes to fill out the all seven categories on what you need to do in the next month to reach your one year goal. Once you have that completed, go ahead and press the play button and we'll move forward. All right, so we just visioned out what we need to do in the next month in order to reach our five year dream. Now, what I wanna do is break it down even further. From one month to one week, what do I need to do? Going back to our seven categories of goals, what would that look like if in order to reach your one month goal, what would I do this week? In the next seven days, what do I need to do to accomplish my one month goal in my lifestyle? In the next seven days, what do I need to do to accomplish my one month goal intellectually? Maybe in the next seven days, I'm gonna choose my books for the next 12 months. What do I need to do relationally in the next week in order to set myself up for my one month goal? What do I need to do in the next week to meet my physical one month goal? Well, what about the next week for my spiritual one month goal? What do I need to do the next week in order to reach my occupational one month goal? And what do I need to do in the next week to reach my emotional one month goal? These should be about a sentence long, quick answers, quick actionable items that you can do in the next week in order to reach your goals. Go ahead and take the time to write these up. When you're ready, press play and we'll go ahead and move forward. Now you thought you were done now that we've completed our one week goals, but I have one more step for you. Now that we have our one week goals, I want you to choose one thing to do in the next 24 hours for all seven categories. This should be a very easy thing to do in the next 24 hours. For example, for my lifestyle goal, maybe my goal is to have a brand new car in the next five years. In the next 24 hours, I'm gonna write down my three favorite cars. If intellectually my goal is to be in five years to be on stage in an investment workshop, today I'm gonna choose, in 24 hours, I'm gonna choose a podcast that I can learn a little bit more about investing. If my five-year dream in my relationships is to have a very connected, consistent relationship with me and my mother, in the next 24 hours, I may ask my mom when we can put something on the calendar for every month that I can see her. If physically my goal in five years is to be a power lifter, in the next 24 hours, I may choose to look up different power lifters and follow them on Instagram. Spiritually, in the next 24 hours, maybe I'm looking up a mindful app. Occupationally, in the next 24 hours, maybe I'm writing down all of these goals in one place. Emotionally, in the next 24 hours, maybe I'm subscri subscribing to a podcast on how to reduce stress. And there you have it. You have your goals for the next 24 hours or your action steps in the next 24 hours to reach your five-year dream. Just take a moment and look back on how that feels. When we first started this journey, this video, we've looked into five years from now. What would you dream to have? And right now we're looking at a 24 hour action plan, small steps that'll take you to a huge dream. Isn't that cool? Now the next thing is, how do I continue to work towards my five-year dream? First and foremost is let's break down that plan. Let's get you into another class where you plan out your business. You plan out how am I going to reach these goals? Let's make a commitment to these goals. Create daily habits that work towards that goal. Track those habits. See if you're keeping up with them. When you miss a day of hitting your habits, that's okay. Just get back on the horse when you're ready. Be accountable. There's three levels of accountability that we recommend you have. One is a peer-to-peer -peer accountability relationship where you're working with somebody who is in a similar situation as you with their business, maybe a similar mindset, and you can hold each other accountable to these goals. We also encourage a spouse or a 
child or a friend, a personal level of accountability. This person is somebody that's at home that you can reach out to and ask to help hold you accountable to your goals. And last but not least, look for a mentor accountability partner. Somebody maybe you aspire to be. Somebody who is doing the things that you dream of doing one, three, five years from now and ask them to hold you accountable to their goals. And if you're serious, right now you'll go ahead and pause the, the video and you'll text all three of these people, your accountability partner at home, your peer, and your mentor, and tell them about your 24-hour action plans. Ask them to hold you accountable to it. Maybe ask to sit down and buy them a cup of coffee and tell them about your five-year dreams. Ask them to hold you accountable to that. The other things that you can do to commit to your goal is focus on the small victories. Once you crush your 24 hour action plan on all seven categories, be proud of that. Take a moment to say, you know what? I worked hard on hitting all of those and I hit every single one. Make a victory out of it. Maybe post something on Facebook. Maybe buy yourself a candy bar unless you're trying to lose 20 pounds, don't do that. Last but not least is call to action. What did we do today that was a call to action? We built out our 24 hour action plans. Keep doing that. Keep trying to build out action plans that you can do every day to make sure that you reach your five year dream. Now it doesn't stop here. One thing that we can do to express our five year dream to our clients, our friends, our family is to create a called what's called an MVVVP. This is your mission, your values, your vision, your beliefs, and your perspective. Keller Williams has an MVVVP where we really know how to sing the song of Keller Williams. This can almost be your elevator pitch. This is something that you'll post on your websites, something that you can put down inside of your advertisement. What is your mission, value, vision, belief, and perspective? To get an idea of how to build this out, go ahead and take a look at the left hand of the screen. Keller Williams' mission is to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, and lives worth living. What is your mission? What are you going to accomplish? What difference will you make? Keller Williams' values is God, family, then business. What do you value? Keller Williams' vision, to be the real estate company of choice. What do you vision? What was your five-year dream? How could you use that to create your vision? Your belief system. Keller Williams believes in win-win or no deal. Integrity, do the right thing. Customers always come first. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. Creativity, ideas before results. Teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust starts with honesty. Success, results through people. What is your belief system? Perspective. Keller Williams thinks like a top producer, acts like a trainer consultant, and focuses on all the activities on service, productivity, and profitability. What is your perspective? Next, we would love to see you for the business planning class, the 135, and that's gonna happen Thursday, October 17th at 12 o'clock. If you are watching this after the business planning class has already um, gone through, please reach out to myself or Jackie and we'll make sure to get you the resources so you can do your business planning. Thanks so much for watching and go after your five-year dream.